Item Number SCP-1712 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures All information regarding the SCP-1712 incident is to be suppressed, with the cover story of an office suicide having been disseminated. All images of SCP-1712-A picked up by satellite imaging are to be edited by Foundation personnel embedded in organizations capable of observing the anomaly. Foundation-operated probes are to continuously track SCP-1712-A's location. SCP-1712-B is contained within a custom wildlife enclosure at Site-77. The walls of this unit are to be made of stone, and direct interactions prohibited. In the event SCP-1712-B breaches containment or requires relocation, the entity is to be tranquilized and handled using specialized equipment. Description. SCP-1712 is the collective designation for two anomalous objects, which manifested as a result of an unexplained event. RAISA Notice Please see attached UE log for details. Despite various attempts at recreating the event, utilizing SCP-1712-B and subjects similar to SCP-1712-A, the Foundation has not successfully created another SCP-1712 event. SCP-1712-A is the petrified body of one Richard Boyd, a citizen of Chicago, Illinois, in addition to half of an iron beam. Currently, it is located in the outer rim of the solar system, and is moving at a rate of about 20 km per hour, with its speed increasing exponentially. SCP-1712-A is expected to reach observable range within five years. It is currently unknown if Boyd possessed the knowledge properties prior to becoming SCP-1712-A. SCP-1712-B is a tabby kitten with black and white fur. It weighs 8 kg and displays behavior expected for a cat of its age. When SCP-1712-B makes contact with living tissue, the tissue will immediately transform into stone. This transformation occurs instantaneously, and will also affect non-organic matter the subject is making direct contact with, such as clothing, held objects, and the ground beneath them. This effect appears to extend about a meter in diameter from the closest source of formerly living tissue. SCP-1712-B has not been noted to age during its time in containment. The following note was found attached to SCP-1712-B's collar. If found, contact Grinmar the Trebuchet, contactable in Kingdom of Suba, R.M. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The following documentation has been included in the object's files, as they pertain to the related anomaly anomalies prior to SCP object classification. Alexis Rose. Document Curation RAISA Article Number UE-1721 Event Description On the morning of August 11, 1959, Richard Boyd was working in his office when witnesses say he noted a cat on the construction area and attempted to crawl out onto the construction area to rescue it, against the advice of others. The building in which he worked was having an addition built. After contacting the cat, Richard immediately lost his balance, fell, and then vanished from sight. Date of Occurrence August 11, 1959 Location Chicago, Illinois, United States Follow-up action taken MTF Kappa-11, Red Barons, was mobilized to track Richard Boyd's location, but were not able to track it after it exited the operating range of their aircraft. Foundation personnel were able to recover the involved feline and administered Class B amnestics to all witnesses. The cover story of a suicide was disseminated. Boyd's supervisor, Michael Margills, was interviewed to obtain information on the subject. A transcript of the interview has been attached below. Update, November 22, 1961 Visual contact with Richard Boyd has been re-established using satellite imagery. Due to the ongoing nature of this anomaly, SCP object classification is currently pending. End file. Interviewed Michael Margills, Sales Department Lead, Chicago Meat Packing Limited. Interviewer 
Field Agent Valdez Forward. Agent Valdez interviewed Margills under the guise of a Chicago Police Department investigator to obtain as much knowledge on UE-1721 as possible. Begin Log Thank you for agreeing to this interview on such short notice, Mr. Margills. It's no problem, Detective. I'm fixing to figure out what happened just as much as anybody. Smoke? No, thank you. Of course, Detective. Now, what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you to describe the event to the best of your memory. I don't reckon my story is any different from anyone else's, but here goes. We file our sales reports on Tuesday, so all the guys were out there earlier today. Everything was normal till I hear Wilkins and Roberts yelling after Boyd. I assume you left this office at this point? Right on the money, Detective. I go outside to check on the ruckus, and I see him out that first window you passed before coming in here. He's doing a bouncing act on those beams all for a damned cat. Anyways, the wind just so happens to blow a little stronger than it was and… <laughs> kaput. Gone. Think the cat fell off too. An on-site investigator knows that a chunk of the beam he was walking on was missing as well. You didn't hear a thud or anything like that? Buddy, I trust those Union Builders about as far as I can throw them. That beam is probably made of plastic. Wouldn't surprise me if poor old Boyd, his flea bag, and that so-called beam wound up in the river. Do you suspect the construction workers at all? Nah, they're honest people trying to make a living. It's those Union organizers and their piece-of-shit protests that get under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn unions, I tell you. Right. I just have a few more questions for you, Mr. Margills. Apologies, Detective. It's been a strange day. It's not every day a man bashes literally in the thin air. <laughs> <coughs> oh, hell, excuse me. You were saying, Detective? Now, I'd just like to ask a few questions about Mr. Boyd. Did he get along well with his co-workers? Any abnormalities in his behavior as of late? Not that I can think of. He got along fine with the other guys, but he's always been one of the more quiet ones. Didn't smoke or drink either. And his performance? Well… <sighs> he always made quota. Never really excelled, but never fell behind the pack either. If anything, he was reliable. What about his personal life? Has he ever talked about a family or anything of that nature? In the ten years he's worked here, he ain't ever brought up a gal or any kids. He's only ever taken a few personal days and been sick a few times. He must have parents, but he ain't ever mentioned them. You figure they're dead? We're looking into that. One more question, if you will. Fire away. Was it in Boyd's character to put himself in danger like that? Hell no. He was as meek as they came. Did have a real soft spot for cats, though. Every now and then I would catch him feeding the strays by the dumpster, and he'd always be tearing up and sniffling. I think he had one of those, uh, what do you call them? Allergies? Yeah, that's it. Both are silent for fifteen seconds. Valdez stands, grabbing the tape recorder. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Margills. It is greatly appreciated. Do you have anything else for me before I go? Well, may I ask you something? Of course. What do you think happened? No idea. Strange things just happen sometimes, I suppose. End log. Closing statement. Margills with administered Class A amnestics following the interview. <laughs>